All right, welcome to Wednesday's Bible study at Elevation Chapel Online. I'm studying the book of Mark, and I thought we'd go right back to chapter 1, verse 9. This is where Jesus is baptized. And this coming Sunday, we have a baptism service. So if you're in the area, uh, 10.30 a.m., our Sunday service, it's going to be exciting. Verse 9, it came to pass in those days that Jesus from Nazareth was baptized uh, by John, John the Baptist, in the Jordan River. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Right there, there's the Father's blessing. Jesus had lived a sinless life, but now he's getting the, the blessing of the Holy Spirit, the blessing from God. And this is uh, where he then goes on a 40-day fast. And we're also fasting here 21 days uh, from sun up till 6 p.m. But still, we're fasting. We're trying our best to follow in the teachings of Jesus and apply this to our life. After Jesus uh, spent 40 days in the, the desert uh, fasting and resisting temptation, then he really started his public ministry. And he then is... is He's quoted as saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel means good news. We all need good news. And <laughs> we can all be ministers like Jesus. Uh, Jesus called us to be ministers. Followers of him mean to, means to go out and do what he did. And to spread the good news. The good news of God, God's love, and his forgiveness. But not just that, he wants us to, to walk with him, talk with him, and then be able to share his word with others in a way that's life-changing. And Jesus did that. He, he, then he goes on, starting about verse, verse 16, he calls his first disciples. And he's calling them to drop their, their work of what they were doing, like fishermen, drop your nets, I'll make you fishers of men. Come with me, I'll teach you the ministry to do what I do. And he does that, and he, and he heals someone with a high fever. Uh, he heals someone who's demon-possessed. It says he healed many after a Sabbath sunset. He cleanses a leper. Back then, leprosy was uh, just, just a rampant. And then, one of my favorite stories in all of the Bible. We'll pick it up in Mark chapter 2. And this is uh, Jesus now. People are like, who is this Jesus guy going around healing everyone? Uh, so he's got quite a following already, just in the beginning of his ministry. Uh, and so it says, he went to this house and immediately many gathered together uh, and there was no more room. The place was sold out, packed out, and people couldn't even get you know, in the door. So imagine this little house, or maybe it was a big house, it doesn't say, but either way, it's packed. And then the crowd is outside just listening, trying to hear Jesus teach. Well, there were some men that had a, a friend who was paralyzed, and these four guys picked up their friend on his, his little portable bed there, and it says in verse 3, they, they, they came to him, bring the paralytic, and carried by these four men, and when they could not get near him because of the crowd, meaning Jesus had such a crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. Houses were built totally different back then. So when they had broken through, and how many need a breakthrough? Well, this guy who was paralytic needed a breakthrough, and his friends were going to force a breakthrough right through the roof. <laughs> and they let the bed down, uh, which the paralytic was lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Just try to put yourself in this wild, wild scene. Verse 6. And some of the scribes were sitting there, scribes, religious people, probably very judgmental. <laughs> and uh, the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit, that's why it's important to have discernment, understanding of the Holy Spirit, will give you counsel on the inside, what's going on around you. He said to them, why do you reason about these things in your heart? hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, arise and take up your bed and walk? 
Verse 10. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up his bed and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We've never seen anything like this before. The power of God is mind-blowing and life-changing. So I encourage you to get into the Bible. Get a study Bible. You can start online, but I encourage you to get yourself a good study Bible. Just go to Amazon, type in study Bible. I love the New Living Translation, the NIV, New King James, the message. There's lots of good ones, but the important thing is get into it. Read the New Testament. Understand who Jesus is and start to ask him to show you how you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It'll change your life and you will be able to help others change their lives for the better. This world needs peace. This world needs love. And God is love. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And tune in next week for more at Elevation Chapel.